Wow, come everyone. Today we'll have a new build for last epoch with a falconer. Now looking behind me, this is a falconer in level 100 dungeons with echoes. And oh boy, I am extremely speedy, deals a lot of damage, and I'll be flashing farming, and I'll be demonstrating to you guys how speedy and also how mobile our build is. Now our build will be using a variety of damage sources, including area assault, together with falcon strike and also dive bomb, dealing tons of damage. Now I was unable to get the best recording because I couldn't find it. I was able to hit close to 200,000 with my dive bomb. Together with a combination of our skulls, you can be transitioning through the map super fast. So let me try to show you guys the mobility of, this, of the build. And this is one of the biggest highlights. You have tons of ways of gaining movement speed. And my movement speed was easily achieving close to 120% or 130%. And if you don't believe me, let me try to show you guys over here. So here, let me try to show you guys the movement speed. So here, 122%, and sometimes I was going close to 130%. So yeah, the build is incredibly speedy. Here is 137%. And the build is incredibly speedy. It deals tons of damage, and I was farming monoliths super fast using this build by clearing out dungeons and also maps. Now just to show you guys a little more of the demonstration of the build. The build is extremely mobile, and this means you can be moving constantly. My build will provide you with cooldown reduction as you cast your skills in rotation, as you can see with my skills. And because of this, you'll keep up the mobility while dealing damage while moving. This means you can be pulling enemies behind you and one-shotting them. And while doing so, you'll also be casting Shadow Shroud, which allows you to lower the enemy's armor and also deals more damage. And this also provides you with even more movement speed. And as you can see in the easy retire play, I don't stop, I just keep moving. I have set my loot filter pretty strict so that only item that drops I want to loot, I'll go for those. And this means I don't have to stop for anything. <laughs> and I can be keep running through the map super, super fast. Now compared to the usual dive bomb build, which I shot for you previously with my friend, I'm using the ballistas to do a little more single target damage and also more consistent armor shredding. Now you might be wondering, how does the build fare with bosses? So here we have a short replay of demonstrating with one of the Echo bosses in level 100. So I don't think I have too high corruption, this is about 100 corruption. I wasn't really checking the corruption. So over here you can see that we don't really have problem with the boss. I won't say this is the fastest boss killing build, which I'm planning to build on the next one with stronger ballistas. This build is extremely mobile. And this means you have so much room for errors, you can be moving around, and you'll be able to dodge so many attacks, and the boss can't hit you, because you're so fast. I would say this build is probably on a B or maybe A- minus tier list with, in terms of bossing, but everything else, the build is great. And you can see in the replays, we don't really have problem with the boss, you still crit for over 10, 20,000 every hit with a falcon, and you can easily crit, you know, 40, 50,000 with a dive bomb consistently. One of the biggest highlights for the build for me at the moment is the extreme, the extreme mobility. I can really be moving around my character, and if you look closely, we are doing some really good damage. Critical hitting, about 20,000, 30,000 a hit with the Falcons, and the boss will die. I think this boss took less than 2 minutes, maybe around 1 minute to kill, and that was pretty solid for me while farming for the Echoes. Now over here, I have crafted my build manually at level 86. Due to some strange errors, I cannot import my build from my current character with Majestic and also Majestic Falconer, Majestic F, into the builder. It just doesn't work. So I crafted this one manually, and you can see my deal, you know, implicit gears with the Falconer helmet and also the Falconer armor. So this is a little stronger than my build if you look at the builder's guide, but everything should be working. And together you can see the choices of the skills and also passives over here. Now briefly going through the choices of items, I'm currently using two unique items which I do plan to get higher legendary potential and craft those into legendaries. And this one has a pretty bad role. You can see there's only one to dive bomb and also three to other spells. In terms of other items, I did get lucky with a plus four on the dive bomb, which was not bad, but everything else, my build is pretty standard. Other than those two uniques, you're going for more minion damage and also more minion damage on the rings. Armor shooting effect and also more skills onto your relic if you can. And similarly, getting more minion damage or dive bomb damage onto the helmet will be really helpful. As for the belt and also for the boots, 
I'm still going with increased damage combination, but I also have a super speedy boot that brings us close to 140% movement speed with a top tier 7 roll with 29% movement speed. Now because you guys can also see my ideal gears onto the builder, I don't have to go through the gears too much I think. So what I really want to focus is the combination of the spells. The first one we have is going to be the falconry. And falconry strike will allow us to deal pretty decent damage consistently. And we have ways of dealing more damage with the combination over here with the falcon's mark. Together with the aero assault that provides us with tons of haste, mobility and also additional damage while lowering the cooldowns of our other spell you also provide us with catch-ups to slow enemies so this is a utility mobility skill that allows us to do tons of damage now one of the biggest highlight with area assault is actually the placement of the skill this is a very good tip from my friend half mind and i do want to show you guys over here so if we quickly jump over to the passives one of the biggest value point over here is going to be this point, I do believe, the Coordinated Fate. This particular passive allows you to gain Silver Shout, 3 Silver Shout. And what does this provide is, this will provide you to dodge the next attack while gaining 100 ward per shout. So basically, you're guaranteed to dodge one attack every 10 seconds, and you get 300 ward. And it is extremely important, guys, to have the area of salt onto the kill button. And this is the by far the lifest skill on your tree. And what that means is, if you click, you get Silver Shout. And this is extremely good, because this will be my mobility spell. Every 10 seconds, because I'm spamming every assault, I'm constantly getting 100% dodge. And if I get hit, I'll dodge the attack and get 300 ward. This is extremely good for survivability and also for damage reduction. So yes guys, it's very important for you to place area assault onto this particular side over here. On the first button and on the leftmost side of your skill bar. Now on the topic of some good tips, both me and my friend who plays Falconer have noticed that there's a bug where if you press your area assault, sometimes you're stuck on the ground. One of the ways for me to discover how to fix this is simply by summoning one turret if you do find yourself stuck on the ground, and this will unstuck your character. I don't think that is intentional, but I can't show you guys over here the bug, but if you do face a bug of stucking on the ground with area assault and you can't move, you just cast one turret and you should be able to move. It's extremely important for you to move, because if you don't move, you'll take away more damage. Now coming back to our skills, our smoke bomb will provide us with longer duration, increased damage, and also armor shredding effect. Together with the ability to increase dodge rating with the dark dusk shroud, it is very very powerful, both defensively and also offensively. It will also be armor shredding using our turrets. So currently my ballista is an armor shredding turret. This allows me to clear off little monsters that I don't want to be spamming my spells on, getting some summons to tank for me, and also shedding armors onto enemies who are really tanky, like the boss. Now in terms of the blessings and also the choices of idols, it's pretty straightforward. We'll be me and Max to get as much life as we can, while me and Max our resistance. And as for the blessings, it is quite similar. You'll try to get whatever you can, of course. Now, I don't have the perfect blessing over here, but ideally you want all resistance if you can. And here, if you look at the builder, this is the ideal setup I want to achieve by having higher multipliers and also better physical damage and also better blessing. I'm still trying to get over there. So notice that those are the things I want to get to as well, to have a little more critical chance, also more damage over here. Now briefly coming through the skill rotations and also my recommendations for this build. Right away you can see guys, we want to keep up the mobility. And you'll be gaining haste, you'll be gaining additional damage and also additional movement speed as you cast your spells. So it's very important for you to constantly be moving. You should be cutting enemies. Your source of damage should mainly come in from your falconry and also your dive bomb. Notice that we're also having cooldown reductions as we cast our skills in rotation, including area assault, falconry and also dive bomb. So those three spells will lower each other's spells cooldown as you strike onto enemies. Now one of the things I do want to notice, if I come over to my passive over here, I'll show you guys over here. One value point will be allocated into sapping strike. So this will provide you with tons of health and also mana, surprisingly, when you use your dive bomb. Because your dive bomb will actually not cost any mana. A zero mana spell that hits enemies massively is actually really good for everything. 
You gain tons of mana back and you also gain tons of life. So our dive bomb will also help us heal while doing tons of damage as you saw in the replay. So notice that my skill rotations and also my combinations is quite smooth once you get the hang of it. You don't want to be casting all of your spells at once. Rather, you want to cast your you know, Aerial Assault followed by Falconry followed by Dive Bond in a rotation. So once you spread those three spells out, you'll always be having tons of damage and together with survivability with your Smoke Bond and also dealing some constant damage with your Ballista. Now in terms of the loot filter for this build, I'll be providing you guys with two versions. I'm currently using my Falconer plus Warlock version with tier 7 more strictness. And I also made an adjustment for the tier 6 strictness, which I'll be adjusting the Exotic Gears into tier 6. And this means the FXs will appear at tier 6. I'll have both of the working progress loot filter available for you guys. And once you import the filter guys, if you're not planning to farm for Warlock, just unclick everything with the name of Warlock on it. But if you're planning to farm from Warlock, this will be even better, right? I do have an explanation guide of using and also crafting this particular loot filter. So if you want more explanation about the loot filter, make sure you see our previous video as well. So what I do now is, I'll provide you guys with a short replay of me farming through Echoes to demonstrate to you guys how speedy and also how smooth the build is. And after that, I will provide you guys with a short boss fight with the Echo Boss. Now before I finish, do keep in mind guys, this is a mobility build. You're not expected to stop and also face tank monsters. Because if you, <laughs> if you didn't know, most of our survivability will come in from moving. So damage taken while moving is very important. And here we have more damage reduction taken while moving and also effectiveness of moving, increased dodge rate and also increased movement speed. So it's very important guys for you to keep constantly moving and also constantly kiting enemies. Even for the bosses, you want to be running around them, dodging skills and pressing your Q as much as you can. Because the ability of gaining more silver shot means you'll be always dodging the first attack every 10 seconds. Really really powerful to be on the Q button over here for your first item or for your first skill slot.